Hey folks, welcome to Reptile Room. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm staring up at the night sky, I can't help but wonder, where the heck is everyone? I mean, with billions upon billions of stars out there, each potentially hosting planets, it seems like we should be bumping into aliens like it's a cosmic rave or something. But nada, zip, zilch. This cosmic silence, my friends, is what's known as the Fermi Paradox. We've all heard the question before, are we alone in the universe? But what makes this especially mind-boggling is that, statistically speaking, the odds should be in favor of alien life existing. Think about it. Our galaxy alone has around 100 billion stars, and that's just the Milky Way. Multiply that by the estimated 2 trillion galaxies in the observable universe, and you get numbers so big, they'll make you puke all over yourself. So why is it that we haven't found any signs of extraterrestrial life? Is it because they're avoiding us? Did something happen to them? Or could it be that we're missing something big, something that could answer the monumental question that physicist Enrico Fermi posed back in the day? Where is everybody? Stick around because we're about to dig deep into the theories, the possibilities, and the straight-up cosmic weirdness that make up the Fermi Paradox. All right, so you're probably asking, who's this Fermi dude, and why's he got a paradox named after him? Great questions. Enrico Fermi was an Italian physicist who basically laid down some of the early framework for nuclear energy. But besides splitting atoms, the guy was also obsessed with the probability of extraterrestrial life. And one day, over lunch with colleagues, he just blurted out, where is everybody? That's how the Fermi paradox was born. But we can't talk about Fermi without bringing up the Drake equation. This mathematical formula is like the Rosetta Stone for the likelihood of intelligent life out there. Created by astrophysicist Frank Drake, the equation factors in things like the rate of star formation, the number of those stars with planets, the planets that could potentially support life, you get the idea. And when you crunch those numbers, you end up with a result that screams, we can't be the only ones here. It's like cosmic math homework, and according to the equation, the galaxy should be teeming with life. But there's no definitive answer. The variables are so speculative that the equation could point to millions of civilizations, or it could be as low as one. Yeah, that's right, we might be the only ones. Or maybe this is where life starts, and we eventually expand out. Both Fermi and Drake gave us the framework to ask the big questions, and their work still fuels debates and discussions today. Now, there's this freaky concept called the Great Filter. The idea here is that there's some sort of cataclysmic hurdle that every intelligent civilization has to clear. For some, it might be avoiding self-destruction, nuclear war, environmental disaster, you name it. For others, it might be surviving natural cosmic cataclysms like asteroids or supernovas. But let's get really speculative. What if we're the first to make it past this great filter, huh? That would mean we're the old timers in a universe just bursting with infant civilizations. Or worse, what if the great filter is ahead of us? Maybe we're just blissfully ignorant, dancing on the edge of our own extinction. The deafening silence of the universe could be a cosmic red flag, telling us something's amiss. Maybe it's the universe's way of saying, be careful what you wish for. Have you heard of von Neumann probes? These are theoretical, self-replicating spacecraft. Imagine sending one of these bad boys to another star system. It lands on a moon or an asteroid, mines it for materials, builds a copy of itself, and then both ships head out to do it all over again. The wild part is, with this tech, you could pretty much colonize the entire galaxy in a couple of million years. Now, I know that sounds like a long time, but in cosmic terms, that's a Sunday afternoon. So if another civilization is even a smidge ahead of us in the tech game, where are all their probes? Could it be that they know something we don't? Something that makes them say, let's not spam the galaxy with our tech. 
let's say you're not into probes, maybe you're more of a Star Trek Federation of Planets kind of person. With galactic colonization, we're talking about setting up cosmic pit stops all over the Milky Way. Given enough time, shouldn't we be stumbling upon some ancient alien rest stations by now? Unless, of course, something, whatever it is, is wiping out civilizations before they can stick their flag in cosmic soil. Either way, the technology for spreading across the stars probably exists. So why haven't we seen any signs of it? Maybe because reality isn't as friendly to spacefaring civilizations as we'd like to think. Or maybe we're not looking in the right way. Or maybe we're not meant to find it. You ever feel like you're on The Truman Show? Well, what if I told you we might actually be on a cosmic level? This is the zoo hypothesis. The idea is that aliens know we're here, treating Earth like a galactic zoo, just watching, not interfering. Look, if you were an advanced civilization, would you really want to introduce yourself to a species that still fights over parking spots? Heck, we might even be an intergalactic tourist attraction. Come see the humans, they think they're the center of the universe. And the simulation theory takes this to a whole other level. What if this reality isn't real at all? Yeah, like the Matrix. We're talking about the idea that we're all just lines of code in an incredibly advanced simulation. I mean, Elon Musk is a believer, so should we consider it too? If this is true, then maybe the reason we haven't met E.T. is that they haven't been programmed into our game yet. It sounds like the plot of a sci-fi movie, but serious thinkers are putting these theories on the table. So, are we a zoo exhibit or a bunch of pixels? Either way, it's kind of humbling and terrifying to think about. So here's another idea, time. It's not just something that flies when you're having fun or drags when you're at work. What if civilizations just don't line up? Like there was an epic alien culture, but they died out a million years ago. Or maybe there's one that's just starting to bang rocks together on the other side of the galaxy. Timing is everything, right? And here comes the rare Earth hypothesis, the Debbie Downer of astrobiology. This theory says, hey, you know how Earth is perfect for life as we know it? Well, good luck finding that somewhere else. We're talking about a Goldilocks zone around a stable star, with a planet that has water, an atmosphere, and a magnetic field to keep all the cosmic nasties at bay. Basically, Earth hit the cosmic jackpot, and maybe we shouldn't be so sure that this kind of luck is common. Maybe we're not just rare, maybe we're unique. Or maybe the party's happening somewhere else and we're just fashionably late or early. You've got questions, we've got, well, more questions. But at least we're trying to find answers. That's where SETI comes in. That's the search for extraterrestrial intelligence for the uninitiated. They're not just sitting around, you know. They've got massive radio telescopes pointed at the stars, listening for ET to give us a ring. NASA had SETI funding back in the day, but Congress pulled the plug. Still, these SETI folks are persistent, now running on private donations and the fuel of pure curiosity. We're not just listening. We're talking too. Remember the Arashibo message? That was humanity's interstellar postcard, beamed out in 1974. The bad news. It was sent to a globular star cluster about 25,000 light years away. So if anyone's home, we won't hear back for another 50,000 years. Ever heard of cosmic censorship? It's this idea that maybe there's some kind of galactic code of conduct. Maybe advanced civilizations know the dangers of blabbing their existence. And then there's the taboo hypothesis. What if we're the cosmic equivalent of an uncontacted tribe in the Amazon? Maybe advanced civilizations are aware of us but choose not to interfere. It's like we're part of some universal wildlife reserve and there's a do not disturb sign hanging on our solar system. Or maybe, just maybe, they're waiting for us to reach a certain level of technology or consciousness before rolling out the extraterrestrial welcome mat. So, while we're here sending memes and TikToks across the internet, there could be a whole level of cosmic net we're not even tapped into. But remember, 
The beauty of these theories is that they're just that theories. We're still just scratching the surface of what could be out there. It's a big universe and we've got a lot of exploring to do. Do you have your own theories? Drop them in the comments below. Let's get the conversation going. If you dug this video and want to take more trips down the rabbit hole, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell.